Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to this edition of our global webinar series. Today is the last topic of our automotive campaign and the topic today is onboard charger. My name is Alexander Nebel. I am field application engineer in Europe and I will moderate the webinar today. We are very pleased that you find the time to join our webinar. Presenter today is Axel Schmidt, our senior field application engineer in Europe. With this information, I hand over to Axel. Hello, Axel, thank you for your time today. Please tell the audience shortly um, about yourself and then you can start with your webinar explaining what is behind an electric vehicle. Thank you, Alex. Um, my name is, you mentioned already, Axel Schmidt. I'm Field Application Engineer, Senior Technical Marketing Manager. I'm with Camel since 2003, so nearly 17, or more than 17 years actually. I'm an electrical engineer <clears throat> with, uh, dedicated to automotive customers since more than 25 years actually. Um, and I'm in charge for Kemet on the German OEMs. That means uh, Audi, BMW, Daimler and Volkswagen, as well as a couple of uh, second, first and second tire, <clears throat> those um, the vendors for the automotive guys. Um, Besides that, I'm like in electronics. If you like to know more about me, so you can visit my website or visit me on Facebook when you like. So for the participants that joined already my last session two weeks ago, um, I've, I finished with that one here. For the one that didn't join it, so what's behind a Tesla? Actually, it's a wall box. And that's the topic today. We wanna to talk about onboard charger. That means so the thing that's going into the car from the grid. Okay. Um, so the onboard charger is a device that is in the car and connected to the grid. And that means you have to, to fulfill two standards. So the safety standards from the grid on the one side, and of course the automotive requirement, typically the ACQ 200 on the other side. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk a little about the requirements typically. So you need to wanna have a high power charger, onboard charger, because it fills up your car more quickly. So we have available something from 3.3 .3 kilowatt to 22 kilowatt here in Europe. The voltage we're dealing uh, about is 85 on the lowest side from the grid, um, as well as on the battery side, we go up to 800 volts. So we're really dealing with something that is um, life endangering. So we need to have take care about certain safety, regu safety uh, regulations. Um, as I said before, the ACQ200 typically contains um, THB. So the components need to pass a temperature humidity bias test. Uh, and there are some other further requirements like traceability, uh, documentation like PPAP levels, uh, PCN handling, and so on and so on. Because we are hanging on the grid, uh, the capacitors has to fill, fulfill some safety standards. Uh, the, the standard is IC 6C384-14, um, also known as uh, safety caps or X and Y caps. Then, when you're in a car, you typically have to consider weight and dimension, so it should not be too big, um, should not be too much weight, uh, should be, of course, reliable, cost optimized, and then in best case, you also have a second source for that. So all these things need to be considered when you do um, the, the um, onboard charger design. So let's look a little bit on the voltage level. So the grid has, um, actually in, in, in Germany, it's 230. Uh, then we have some areas with 110 volt. Uh, there's a certain tolerance, even for the 230 is something plus minus 10%, same on the, on the lower side. So we have to deal with an input voltage of about 85 volt on the lowest AC and 275 AC on the high side, if you're dealing with a one phase system. Um, because people want to charge much more faster the car, uh, three-phase um, charger, onboard charger becoming more and more popular. Um, and here we talk about 400 volts. So on the right side, you see the battery uh, that needs to feed with, depending on your car, between uh, the typically 400 volt, um, which is something 
between 170 and 450 volt or the, the more sophisticated cards that needs to be charged or up to with the 800 volt voltage. And in between, of course, is the onboard charger. And here the power and is given by the, the, the voltage from the grid. And then um, every, every line has a certain fuse as a, as a safety mechanism. Um, and you see here that for, for Germany, it's a 3.3 .3 kilowatt in one phase. That means I have 230 nominal voltage AC RMS and I have a 16 amp fuse. So if the current goes higher than 6 m, of course, the fuse blow up and then it's disconnected. So that's the maximum you can draw out of one line. Um, <clears throat> then you have a, a higher fuse, so that your cable diameter in your house is thicker. Then you can draw 7.2 kilowatt because it's a 32 amp fuse in between. And then the same uh, repeats for the three phase. So if you have 16 m, you can draw 11 kilowatt from the three phase system. Or if you have um, a newer building that was modern installation, you have a 32 amp likely and you can draw 30, uh, 22 kilowatt on that. So this relates directly. So this power levels um, for the non-technical uh, leads directly to the charging time. Well, the charging time is the battery you need to fill up and divide it by the power that the charger can provide. And you see here <clears throat> for the 80 kilowatt, if you have uh, 3.3, so one phase, typically that's as one outlet in your house, an 80 kilowatt hour battery uh, needs to be 18 hours, which is pretty long. I mean, you're 12 hours probably uh, during the night and then you have an additional six hours. So if, if you have a three phase outlet with 22 kilowatt, you can you know, refill your battery theoretically in, in four hours. Um, so that would be very convenient if you are 11 kilowatt, if you're going to work, uh, you park your car somewhere and then you can charge in seven hours back, to, uh, <clears throat> fill up the battery within seven hours on that. So that's the, um, a little bit the background on that. So how, how do we do that? So here's a, the system overview. Um, and I just highlighted the areas where Kemet can offer some products. And the first thing is you see the EMI filter uh, that's directly hanging on the grid here. And that's where the safety components are necessary. And then for, of course, we don't have any active components at, at least yet. Um, so we, we have this interleaf PFC stage uh, where some passive com components went into and the phase shift full bridge. That's a design here from Texas Instruments. Um, I picked out and um, <clears throat> so there are of course, also some passive component within there. And then you have here the high voltage battery. We of course offer the small components uh, for the electronic control system like MLCCs and polymer, but that is not topic uh, today here. So going a little bit more deeper into that. Um, and you see here, I have here the EMI filter. Here's mainly the, uh, the common mode choke was in there and then you have some other inductance and some a capacitor here, typically the X and Y caps. Uh, oh no, that's at the PFC. We have the DC link here. And then here you have snubber caps as well as some inductors. So we have two stages uh, to uh, fill up the battery and, and adapt the power to that. And you see there's a lot of passive components uh, in all this or between all this semiconductor wise. So that is what we typically, um, uh, when we do the discussion with engineers, so we, we draw it on a whiteboard and then we start from scratch designing this, this string of uh, different stages to, to do this and get this onboard charger design here. Um, <clears throat> so the EMI filter has the X2 and Y2 capacitor. And as I said here, the common mode and differential mode show that's uh, all this we talked first. And then we have the PFC stage, um, but we can offer a couple of products. And then we have a DC link that typically is a lytic thing. And then we have some special here that's called KC link. That is a special product for LLC. And then we have, depending on the voltage, we have a transformer here, um, or we have a boost con construct that charge up the battery to 400 respective to 800 volts. So here's the EMI filter. 
so we have typically two Y caps um, and in, in Kemet families expressed, it's R41T is, is a family. And then we have a one X capacitor that is R46 or what we highly recommend is the F862 underscore VO42, uh, 44, uh, 54, sorry. <clears throat> uh, so that, that's specially designed for this application. That means we have components that are according to the safety standard and is automotive qualified, qualified according to ACQ tournament. The magnetics in between the common mode and differential mode is typically uh, custom made because there are so many specific requirements on that. That is really hard to, to get in there with, with the standard components. Some more details for the um, X and Y caps. So we have the X2 harsh environment. Uh, so I had to pass 100% screening at 1,900 volt DC. Uh, so if you would look for this AC voltage on the 310 volt, um, that's more than the two times square root two thing. Uh, so it's, it's really proved for this high voltage um, application because you can consider it that goes short Oh, wow, well, that, that will be a big bang. Um, what we also see for this component um, is uh, recently for is a requirement for DVDT. Actually, we can offer 150 volt per microsecond uh, to 400 volt per microsecond. And currently we're working on 1,500 volt per microsecond. And probably if the market requires higher DVDT, then we will of course develop into that as well. For the R41T, uh, that's a Y2 capacitor. It's, again, it's 125 degrees C. You can use this Y2 also as an X2 capacitor. <clears throat> and here we had this uh, THB, temperature humidity bias test in grade 3B. That means we passed 85, 85 for 1,000 hour, which is similar to um, what we're doing with MLCCs. And um, again, so the 300 volt AC relates to a 1500 volt DC, which should be sufficient for all four and 800 volt systems. Uh, in addition to that, we introduced a hot pot test. That means we apply four kilovolt for 60 seconds to the capacitor. In automotive, typically, it's very important that uh, you, know, you could cover this lifetime aspect. And what's pretty new is that Kemet can offer an online tool that allows you for the X and Y caps to calculate lifetime with, and I'll repeat that, with humidity. It's not only temperature and voltage, it's really uh, temperature, voltage, and humidity. And that's, uh, at least to my knowledge, in the moment unique. You can also have, um, you know, plug in this mission profile. That means a certain percentage of the lifetime is either at 240 volts, 60 degree, 30% relative humidity, um, and then you can do um, um, other stages or other profiles as well. Um, carefully, you should uh, end up here with 100%, otherwise the tool will not work properly. So that was the X and Y safety caps for the EMI filter. So what about the magnetics? Um, actually, we have a common mode and differential mode, and so what, what may be, might be the difference? So you see here, uh, the common mode uh, has the two rails here and that's a kind of plastic. This is uh, simply a distance holder. Uh, so that, that's no electrical function. So we have these two rails enclosed by this magnetic material. And you see on the right side, that's a differential mode. Actually it's not a differential, it's a, a differential mode and a common mode. And I'll let you know. So look on that one here. Um, so we have this small <clears throat> um, uh, material that goes between this rail. And that is what caused the differential uh, mode portion of this filter. That means here we have a combination of a differential mode and a common mode. To point it out a little bit more clearer, so here have the differential mode, so the magnetic uh, material is wrapped around the, the copper rail, it's just one. Uh, of them, so and it goes. The current goes only in one direction. For common mode, we have the magnetic material wrapped around the two rails, whereas the current is going in and going out, so the, the things cancel out each other. 
And then we have here the dual mode. Uh, so that is what I explained in the uh, slide earlier. So this portion here that makes a differential uh, functionality was, was in the ESD core. And again, we have this, this magnetic, uh, this um, air gap here in between to control the, all the things. <clears throat> so what is the challenge when, when we're doing this kind of designs here? Um, actually, when we try to filter out something, we look for an impedance portion. And typically, um, the impedance has a real part and an imaginary part. And for this type of product, of course, we're looking for inductance. The magnetic guys have a different way to express this, uh, what we typically saw R plus, in that case, J omega L. Uh, so they have an introduced um, um, imaginary and a, um, and a real perme permeability um, coefficient that called mu. So we have the J omega L zero, and then we have this mu prime plus mu double prime. Um, so the inductance is that makes us the impedance depending on frequency and that actually we have this L0 by mu r. Uh, so we, we uh, put this mu r as a, the mu zero, the natural constant was into the L0. And, and then we have this, the blue term that is everything that is somehow fixed by uh, construction and by the natural constant. So we have the area, we have the effective length we have the number of turns and of course the, the mu zero. And then we have mu r and that, that definitely is not constant. So uh, I learned it's dialectic constant, but it's not. Um, <clears throat> so that is actually depending on uh, DC current that going through the material at, depending on temperature and also depending on frequency. So let's walk through this uh, three different um, aspect uh, how how mu r could change. So first rated current and that actually when you apply a DC current and that's flowing um, to the, the rail and then get some magnetic flux within the um, magnetic material wrapped around so your your inductance will drop and typically what we said is uh, so saturation current is when the inductance drop by 20%. That's just an agreement. Uh, that's there's no standard behind. So some other companies and even Kemet in some families use minus 30%, some going minus 40%. Keep an eye on that uh, if you want to compare different renders uh, for the same application on that. So <clears throat> next thing is, is frequency. So so we have the impedance somehow related to the mirror. So you see here we have different um, materials, uh, 5HT, 7HT, HT stands for high temperature. And you see on the x-axis the frequency and the y-axis the impedance. So the impedance will change with the frequency here. And then we, when we get typically certain targets like you wanna uh, attenuate something in the AM band range or you wanna do something in the frequency modulation band range or the digital broadcasting area. Um, so what we typically get, we get an attenuation um, chart from you, and then you want to get a get a certain dB level down on the current um, signal, uh, and and getting rid of the um, high frequency noise distortion on that. So <clears throat> that is the um, frequency. We had current. So the last one is temperature. Here, of course you see the dependency of mu prime at different temperatures. And typically we have to talk here about automotive. So we have, uh, we try to be very, uh, very stable in terms of changing inductance over, over temperature. So that uh, 10 HT meant that mu is 10,000 and HT again is for high temperature, which is currently under development. And then we have 7H here and 7HT is something that will come up. Um, well, it's actually is a typo here. Uh, so that is something we, we can also uh, use and develop a specific magnetic um, property. And you see it's 5HT means 5,000 uh, at the beginning here, or uh, mainly here at, at room temperature. So when, when we talk about this um, CMC, DMC combination that going in, in 
or around the copper rail, we typically talk about very high current. And so we need to keep an eye on, on the performance of the uh, ESD means. So uh, watch out for the self-heating of this component. Um, so we have three different kind of losses. So we have the DC copper loss, uh, that's mainly referred to the DC resistance of um, the rail of the materials in there. And then we have an AC copper loss, uh, which based on the skin effect, that means uh, there's a certain reduction of the diameter of your conductor, uh, but where the current going through. And then we have another portion that called core loss that is from magnetizing the, the material by the magnetic flux. Um, and then we need to watch out for this, you know, uh, temperature rise of the component. So also for that, we have this, um, online calculator. So the total losses will be the DC plus AC plus the core loss. And then the maximum temperature should be um, at least uh, the, 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 the sum of the ambient temperature plus the losses in uh, P total. So the DC, AC and core losses times the, the temperature uh, the resistance should be lower than the T max. And that is what you can do here and look on the, um, in the, in the online tools that Kemet provides. So we have uh, some um, inductors where you can calculate the, the, the temperature rise of the component independence of the DC current here and a certain frequency that's, wrapped, uh, that's overlap, overlap, overlaid over this uh, DC current on that. So, uh, and with that, we also have a complete filter calculation tool. That means you give us your requirements. We give a kind of this kind of chart where you want to have a certain common mode attenuation and a differential mode attenuation. And then we can plug in our component and give you a certain filtering uh, for an existing um, requirement that comes from you. If, if you don't want to deal with all that stuff, uh, we can also get you a complete filter. If you don't want to buy the single components from Kemet, we can also assemble that for you, put in a closure around that um, according to your requirements in terms of dimension and electrical properties of the component. So that was about the, uh, the EMI filter. Um, so the next would be the, the PFC. Uh, the standard, uh, there's, there's some regulations in place. Um, so we, we need to keep that, um, or keep the, 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 the distortion on the grid under a certain limit. Uh, what does it mean for the non-technical? So we need to make sure that the phase from current and voltage is more in line. Uh, so with that switching here, you create a, high, a higher content of harmonics that uh, cause some distortions on the grid. And we try to, or the active harmonic filter try to smooth that out on that here. Well, and actually, so you see here with some inductance, we can adjust. We also have this uh, C4AF, uh, that stands, F stands for filtering. Again, this is also a CQ200 certified. Um, it's a very high reliable um, product that fits all to this um, automotive requirement. We have also extended lifetimes. Um, and again, we are working on higher voltage solutions and um, with more than 1,000 hours THP on that. Uh, that's for the filtering and the PFC. So um, next step would be the, the, the electrolytic bank. Uh, actually, it was a, a capacitor bank, which is main, mainly built from aluminum electrolytic capacitors. And here is the, the special thing here is about the high vibration uh, resistance of the components. And how we are doing that, so the families uh, we offer you is ALA7 and ALA8, uh, the snapping capacitors. And we have a very, um, or we did a lot of effort in making this high vibration capable. Uh, for what does that mean? Uh, so we, we have winding that fits perfectly within the aluminum can. And in addition, so we have this grooves here. Uh, so we, we fix the winding additionally or was it that aluminum can by pressing this grooves into the, into the can. And that allows us to 
achieve a high G values compared to a standard component. Um, also for Lytic, the, um, the discussion always is about a lifetime, the same as for the uh, film capacitors, we have an al aluminum electrolytic lifetime calculator where you can also plug in a certain mission profiles. And in addition, you can add in certain frequency ripple tuples um, for this certain um, time slot or percentage of the overall lifetime. And then it gets you some calculations about the hot, um, the hot spot within the component and also the uh, total lifetime of the whole calculation here. Last not least, uh, let's talk about uh, K ceiling. Um, so that that is if you don't if you have a certain LLC construction or so a resonance uh, part of this string here. Um, K ceiling is a ceramic chip that's made for high voltage, high current. So high voltage means it goes up from 500 volt to 1,700 volt. It's based on a, a made on a very stable material, so it's COG. Uh, so it gives you 30 ppm per degree Celsius, which means it's less than 0.5% over the whole temperature range. And because uh, one component has probably a pretty um, a relatively low uh, capacitance compared to the lytic, for example, uh, we can build up here this kind of stacks. Uh, we call it little s stacks. There's a connection between that that's called TLPS, transient liquid phase centering. And so we, we can build up this lead less stack and add some. So we, we can do that for a lot of case sizes starting 12, 10 and up. Uh, the most case ceilings are made in 3640 um, and we can build up up to four of them into a stack which gives you 880 nanofarad for that at 500 volt. Um, because um, we see more and more this 800 volt application. So we open up this, um, uh, the voltage level for K ceiling. We started with 500 and in the meantime, it's going up to 1,700 where you get 22 nanofarad max uh, for the 1,000 volt, which is uh, for this typically 800 volt system, you get 56 nanofarad. And for the 500 volt, which covers mainly or 630, um, uh, 650 volt, depending on how much safety you want to have, it's 150 nano or 220 nano. It's 150 degree C rated, so that means um, you get much more temperature robust component compared to a film capacitor, which always stick a maximum of 125 degree C. So, and that is how it looks like. So we have, um, so the ALA8, AL7, depending on the temperature requirement, uh, we can do some EMI um, filtering. Um, um, we have an existing family called SCR, which mainly not really suitable for automotive, but if some people really want to use that. And then we have C4AF, C4AQ for filtering and for the DC link. And then we have some chokes for the DC-DC stage uh, which called SHPC, HHPC, and PHPC. Um, so some, so the application requirement um, in, in difference to that is if I have, you know, the DC-DC booster or if I have an LC circuit here. And if I have an LC circuit, I typically need a resonance um, capacitor, which you uh, can go either with the film capacitor or with the MLCC. While here you need probably a higher cap value and then you end up with a film capacity typically. The requirements uh, here is uh, typically only the RMS current. While here we need to consider the DVDT, even you start some development with a wide band gap where you get a very high or very steep DVDT value on that. So uh, that's the DC DC converter stage typically. Um, so we, that, that's kind of a buck regulator here. And another way to express that and redraw that uh, is it actually is similar to the same, but most often you find here um, another MOSFET that can be either used in this diode mode or can be also switched. And then you have the full, um, full phase shift bridge, uh, something around. <laughs> 
again, so I have this uh, PHPC and then you have C4AQ, that's our DC link capacitor here. So uh, you also need, and that's something I would like to announce and ask you to get in touch with uh, Kemet Sales. Uh, we are working on uh, current sensors that uh, fulfill the uh, standards for the charging stations. Um, that is the, or uh, fulfill the IC 62955. You see it's, it's coming in 2221 in the first half. That means we're currently working on that. So if you have some request or you're thinking about, uh, please contact Camet Sales. They can link you to the appropriate person within Camet. And then probably we can, you know, deliver pre-samples or, or pick up some special requirements from you and so on. So this device has, uh, besides the sensors, also a microcontroller was in there. Um, and it's programmed by I square C and has to fulfill the ASIL uh, requirement and the ISO 2262. So that is something that's coming and we would like to challenge you or ask you to challenge us for that and ask for the component. So the wrap up here is um, we offer all the passive components that is in the onboard charger at all stages, um, passive components, as I said. Um, many for film capacitor look for the family C4AQ, C for the DC link and C4AF for the filter capacitors. The safety capacitor, we highly recommend R41T. For the Y2, we can also use an X2. Uh, probably uh, maybe a good idea if you want to increase the volume, get lower the prices because the volume is bigger. Or you use separate X2, uh, which then is the family name F862 underscore VO. 52. Uh, magnetics for filtering and energy choice. I mean, mainly go to Camel Sales and ask for custom solutions. Um, I mean, the, the colleagues in Japan are very fast, very quick, and, and very competent in giving you short, uh, short answers and planning further steps. And keep in mind the, last, the slide before uh, the RCD sensors, the current sensors for DC and AC in charging station fulfilling this, all this required standard, which coming next year, but we ask you to ask us now uh, about more information and, and starting uh, kind of collaboration to get the product uh, with market needed fittings in, in next year. So, and with that, um, I will more or less finish the wrap up. So thank you for joining our automotive campaign in October, 20 to 20. Uh, so uh, four weeks ago, we talked about Adders. Two weeks ago, we talked about, uh, so that was my colleague, Alex is the host today. We talked about the uh, assistance, driver assistance systems. Um, two weeks ago, I talked about the powertrain. So everything we're going into the, the uh, what drives the motion. And then my, my French colleague, Mawad, he did the 48 volt system uh, last Monday, actually a week ago. And I close that session here with the onboard charger today. And with that, I would say thank you and turn back to Alex. Are there any questions in between? Hello, Axel. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Uh, very interesting. And again, I learned something new. Um, but also, it seems like I have heard this already. <laughs> so um, some new things um, and also some things I have already heard. And when I look at the Q&As uh, for the moment, not many questions. There's just uh, one question. Um, are the custom common mode chokes only for automotive applications or also for industrial applications? We can do that. I mean, that's not restricted to, um, to automotive. We, we can also do that for industrial applications. Uh, please contact the Kemet sales or write me an email and then I can direct you to the responsible person and then they get in touch with you and, and talk about the project. Of course, um, there should be a, a certain project behind. So we, we want to do that and not for one or two pieces. So we nearly think, talk about, you know, uh, volume production. And that is what we had in mind, of course. Okay. So we still have time for your questions. Um, uh, anyone can ask uh, with the Q&A function. Um, and just one more question, can X, Y and Y2 used uh, capacitors be used in DC applications? 
Yes, actually, um, uh, that's what I mentioned in the slides that uh, we have given also DC voltage levels. Yes, you can do that. Um, they are really um, um, for the DC level, you can use the X and Y caps. And we had this uh, R41T, for example, is good for 1500 volt DC. Okay. So it seems I'm, it seems for the moment, these are all questions. Um, to all of the attendees, if you still have questions, you can contact Axel directly or your local sales or application engineer, your local Kemet contact or distributor, and uh, we will help you immediately by, with answering the questions. And with this, Axel, thank you for presenting today, and I hope to see you soon. Perfect. Thank you. Take care also from my side and keep in touch. Bye-bye. Okay. Goodbye.